Watching the announcement trailer, I was sold by a single name, Michael Stan, the vocalist of Dark Tranquility, one of three bands that would cement the sound of melodic death metal in Gothenburg, Sweden in 1995. I was ecstatic, so imagine my reaction by looking at the other names on the roster, half of which I grew up with. These are the voices that will punctuate my kills as the unknown, which prophecy holds will collapse the realms of hell as a hell singer. We've had our voice taken, and have been sealed away by the devil, the judge, but with its magic now broken by a sentient skull, we will fulfill our role. The premise is metal, but the protagonist whose design appeals to my sense of a great one. She has the look of a villain, and the gameplay doesn't fall short. We shoot to the beat of music, shooting for its 16 times multiplier to have a crescendo to voice, with songs like Acheron featuring Randy Blythe the Lamb of God. The last thing I want is to fail to live up to it. I love that headbanging turns into a game mechanic, and the same goes for the need to reload, both helping and getting my timing back after it's been lost. There is a definite period where playing to rhythm takes some getting used to, where the instinct to keep the trigger held needs to be suppressed. But there's no denying the feeling when it all comes together. We no longer give conscious thought to the beat, and play the game with the very aggression of a traditional FPS. Our weapons are six in number, each conducive to the task, but our choice is limited to two each level. The limitation does suck, chiefly when the other two slots can be changed from paths, which would surface only by mistake once I got another ranged weapon, and a blade, which I do use, but would prefer as a melee. It's perfect for staggering minials for a glory kill called a slaughter to regain lost health. The other two weapons pick will likely be the only ones used though. The dual pistols and crossbow I found to be the best, as the pistols can fire around on any beat and at range, with the crossbow having the highest damage of any gun, ideal for brutes and swarms. While we have to play in a deliberate way, enemies don't, hitting as aggressively as any other game. These two made it easy to keep pace for extra damage, and more importantly, enjoy the music. Each of those shots will build charge for a weapon's ultimate for an edge, refined further by perks rewarded from challenges called torments. Unlocked after each level, these are worth pursuing and are perfect training, forcing use of weapons and strategies you may not explore otherwise. Locations are recycled, with the RNG sometimes playing a role, but I did enjoy beating them all, even if there isn't a reward for doing so. Visually, the levels of Metal Hellsinger are phenomenal, with lighting and details that give each of its hells a sense of place. My assumption would have never been that this was the first commercial game by The Outsiders, the developer. My focus would divert away from seeking the next arena, to more of what's been rendered. Even if the graphical options are set to low, the resultant image remains an attractive one. While I can't say there is a particular level of highlight, they go back to, collectively, their aesthetic. They each flow into their encounters, arenas fit for the genre, with explosive heals and power-ups. A boss awaits at the Ren, but we're literally fighting the same one for 7 out of the 8 total levels, excluding the tutorial. The judge presides over all of Hell, so it splits itself across him to keep tabs. I get the logic, but would have preferred more variation beyond attacks. The level that falls starts with the cutscene, which leads me into story and replayability. It isn't how events are depicted, but what is. The focus is far more on the enemy than ourselves, in a disengaging light. I recall most of them in a blur, even if the ending is a memorable one that sets the groundwork for a franchise. In a genre where the story is more a vehicle to its gameplay, it can be overlooked. The premise alone does it for me. Replayability at the moment comes down to completing torments and ascending leaderboards. There isn't any incentive to explore either, as there aren't any secrets to be found. The standard difficulty is good, playing to time making the mode harder than usual. Any death will give an option to resurrect by sacrificing a bit of score, whereas with the hardest difficulty, you're left with restarting the level. I started on it, but switched down since I was having trouble with the beat. There wasn't much of a change to damage that I saw, but enemy numbers were drastically cut. On normal, there are fights later on that can't feel like an endurance test, but on beast it sets early, the real fight becoming attrition. I do find myself booting up Hellsinger for its gameplay, but I do reach a saturation point if I choose beast. One final note is that 6 hours seems to be the average for the game. One thing that could tip the scales of replayability is mod support on PC. When I read the tweet that it was inbound, man, my mind went crazy with the possibilities. I enjoyed the music in Metal Hellsinger, finding myself headbanging to it and growling along. After Acheron, I'd say my second favorite song is Dissolution, featuring Bjorn Strid of Soilwork, a band I can't believe has been 20 years since I first checked out, damn. I would say that the OST overall is on the accessible side, which isn't a dismissal, it's a good entry point into metal. 
It has been almost my exclusive choice for music for decades, that I venture has the most subgenres of any other, water shedding as one is brought up. Death metal is my favorite form, with progressive metal and power metal equal in their secondary place. With mods, I can't wait to revisit my four favorite albums of 2021 as much as older favorites. This game can become the perfect medium to check out new music, as focus is always on the beat, and the gameplay is strong. How they'll get around time signatures has me curious, as not all music is written in 4-4 or adheres to it. Imagine playing some Meshuga, I can't wait to see. When I reflect on my time with Metal Hellsinger, my thoughts center on the fun I had with it. The faults get downplayed. There are areas I would have approached differently, having more varied form to bosses, more levels, and a story developed around the unknown, but in-game playing it. The experience feels focused and makes thematic sense. I'm okay with them. The core objective, the pairing of great music to engaging rhythmic gameplay, this game succeeds. I hope this is the first entry of a series, chiefly when considering the promise shown not just by Metal Hell Singer, but the developer, The Outsiders. This is a game I'd recommend. The experience is worth having. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button. If you have any thoughts, please leave a comment, and or if you found potential in me and what I can produce, please subscribe. Once more, thank you all, and have a good one.